Well, welcome back to module nine of our course on the Corporate Transparency Act. And in this module, we're going to talk about banks and financial institutions. This is very important because obviously money is a lifeblood of our businesses. And we want to make sure you know, that we avoid any undue risk to having it cut off. Just like the flow of oxygen, flow of blood, bring oxygen to our oxygen to our brains, would cause us to have a stroke and die. Just the same way, if our funds are cut off, our revenue is cut off, then our businesses die. And I want to talk about how this is all changing with the Corporate Transparency Act, and about how you know banks, well, always there was a, you know since uh, the Patriot Act actually, but as it's you know with more legislation that's happened. Uh, especially in the recent past, like the Anti-Money uh, Laundering Act, the Bank Secrecy Act. This has been going on for about 10, 15 years now, and it keeps moving up and up and up on their um, responsibility and their participation in flagging what they call, what that could be money laundering or, you know, uh, drug trafficking, human trafficking, you know, we've already gone through all this stuff, right? So the way it's been working, and it's not just for banks, it's anybody who has a license financially speaking. I used to be a mortgage broker. We always had continuing education about, you know, uh, uh, filing a, what they call a SAR, a suspicious activity report. Generally speaking, it was pretty simple. If you had someone, if you felt like there was something suspicious, then you would file the the uh, SAR report, suspicious activity uh, report, and then it would get sent off by the financial institution to the, the feds, and then they would handle it. That was pretty much what it was. So, you know, but here's the thing, you know, they banks have the right and they have done so to freeze your account. If they suspect that something's irregular or unlawful, and I'm focused on the irregular part because, again, it's an interpretation, it's a subjective opinion. And what I'm concerned about with so much pressure now from the, you know, for this new law, Corporate Transparency Act, and the fact that the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, FinCEN, is overseeing it, that there is even more pressure on compliance departments and employees especially to you know go nuclear immediately right okay so just give an example i mean i was just reading the new york times recently about this this poor poor sob you know he's in paris with his wife and there also you know tries to pay for his dinner at a, at a french bistro and it gets you know the card was declined turned out they you know his bank chase had frozen the account arbitrarily and, you know, didn't give me an explanation until he got back. And even then it was just really, um, uh, you know, unclear. Eventually, you know, uh, when the New York Times wrote about it, you know, and they contacted the bank and they started backtracking. It turned out that they gave the funds back and they never did, never did give a clear explanation about what happened. I'm not saying it has anything to do with the Corporate Transparency Act. I'm just merely pointing out that banks have frozen and, and will have continued to fr freeze accounts before based on some kind of irregular, quote unquote, odd, suspicious activity. So they already have that thing, that, that, that um, uh, right to do so, and they have done that in the past. Well, because now there's so much more pressure on them that it's more likely that in this environment, those types of things are going to happen much more often. Let me give you an example. I was talking with a, uh, a, you know, I want to say he's a buddy of mine, an acquaintance of mine. He's a high level executive at City, and I was you were just chit chatting, and I said, "Hey, have you heard about the Corporate Transparency Act?" And he says, "Yeah, of course. Yeah, we were. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. in fact, we had, you know, the FinCEN agents were here, Treasury Department agents were here, uh, you know, recently for about a week, and they were training our employees on how to find odd, suspicious." irregular activities for them to flag what's worrisome and this is anecdotal i'm not saying this industry why i'm talking about one specific example but it's telling right it's telling that that um he said that they're under instructions to freeze the accounts immediately i mean obviously they're still going to do a suspicious activity report like they would normally but they're going to they can they're encouraged to preemptively freeze those accounts 
So, you know, again, collateral damage, right? With this environment. And so I asked him, I said, well, what do you think? What's your gut feeling in your bank, for example? How many uh, accounts are you guys going to be, you think will be, you'll be freezing? He says, oh, thousands a month. And he said, it's so matter of factly, it just freaked me out. You know, it's just crazy. And I said, so what happens is, oh, no, the feds, the feds are going to, you know, the FBI gets the report and they're going to start investigating right away. You know, again, it's just crazy. And in the last module, I talked about when I had that issue uh, with someone, you know, filing a complaint against me just with the state licensing division, you know, and the $8,000 and, you know, the my defense attorney said, you know, it's not the original complaint that gets you. It's what they do when they start investigating. And that's the danger, right? So I'm not, for I'm preemptively, if you're thinking, oh, well, they deserve it and blah, blah, blah. Well, no, most of the time these things are just innocent, but it's the collateral damage that's coming. So the danger for us is in this heightened environment where there's lots of pressure because this law on financial institutions, they're going to be more apt to pull the trigger and go nuclear immediately. And then we got to go, we got, you know, we, our, funds are, our funds are frozen. And then an investigation, how, we, how are we going to be able to defend ourselves if our money's frozen? That's what worries me. Again, it's this entire theme of this course about this bull in the China shop response to this idea that, you know, that there's all this money laundering going on and it's just, it's not good for that. It's not good for us. So I'm not saying that if we are exempt from the corporate transparency act, that this means is that suddenly we're much safer. I'm saying that we're less likely to be targeted because we are not in CTA, but it's still there no matter what. So as we go through this course, I want to remind you the question I always ask at the end of each module, why in the world would we sign up for this if we had a way to legally exempt ourselves? And we're leading up to that point where I'll, I'll do the big reveal and tell you about how that is or what that is. But in the meantime, keep thinking about this and how everything's changing. And I'll see you in the next.